There he is. There he is. How you doing, coach? <laughs> God, you look a lot better than I look. <laughs> oh, man. How you doing, man? I'm doing fine. Tom, uh, Tom great to see you. Uh, great to have this opportunity uh, to speak with you. Um, and uh, you get right into it this weekend, right away, where that league is good to you. They put you with three out of four games on the road to start. Uh, that's not easy. And uh, what always was amazing to me with your program is you guys win road games. And uh, it's a little bit different right now with, you know, no big crowds because when Michigan State came comes to town, like Michigan, I, I think we always played in front of sellouts. Yeah. And now you don't have that. I mean, how, how different, how different is it? I know one thing, it's not easier. I know that it's never easy, but tell me what that's been. You had the game at Duke. You know, it's not easier. Like people would think, because I think any competitors, yourself, your teams, my teams, part of the fun is to go on the road and challenge yourself and see if you can handle the crowders. I don't think there's anything better than winning on the road. Do you, I mean, that's, right. that's the ultimate you guys won here that first year that you won here. And it was, I and mean, that's a big deal, you know, like us winning down there. But going to Duke, I said, I'm not going to put an asterisk by it, but it's not quite the same. But uh, you're right. You know, what I did is I, I had our guys put some NBA film on and watch LeBron and them cheerleading uh, in the playoffs. I said, if a $100 million guy oh, can true. cheerlead, we got to do it. So we got our bench going, you know, we're the only ones in the arena. And that's all you got to motivate your kids. You just got to find ways. And we've made it some fun and kind of given some awards to the best yeah. cheerleader. And oh, yeah. yeah. Just try to find a way, you know, but it's different. It's different. I, I always thought any success we had, and I don't think we had the success you had on the road, but we were successful. Oh, yeah. We didn't turn the ball over a lot. So it, it kept that run out momentum change going. What do you think has been the key for you guys? Uh, to, to win on the road for all these years. You always have these tough games. I'd sit there and watch Minnesota, Northwestern. It looked like it's going the other way, and then you get them in the last four or five minutes. You know, I think we still relied on our defense and our rebounding, you know. But but I said, now that you're done coaching, I'm going to try to steal from you because I said, I'm the worst turnover coach in America. I mean, your teams, seriously, now there's a couple teams that I always had eight, nine, ten. And then there's us that are 13, 14. And, and I tried to say, well, we're trying to run more. And I was really lying to myself. I just, <laughs> I don't do a good job. Of, we, we've done a thing in practice now where we put the, I've heard some coaches put the balls in the thing. And if you turn it over more than three times, you're running. And I, I don't know. I don't know why. And this year, John, we're playing too many guys. I'm trying to play 11. And part of it is I have good depth. And part of it is I don't have over-talented depth, so nobody separates themselves. Yeah, yeah. And I think when you play a lot of guys, turn over some too. Yeah. But I think it's our defense that has been pretty solid on the road. As you know, you travel. But if you could, uh, now that we're done competing, give me a few <laughs> turnover rules. I would you. really appreciate it. Yeah, here, here was your one turnover advantage last year. His name is Cassius Winston. That was, that was your, I think you're having 15 a game this year right now to start yeah. out, but I don't yeah. think that's unusual. You're playing all these guys. That, that was another thing, Tom. It would be every year with us. Uh, all right, Michigan State, they're losing. Kalen Lucas, all of a sudden, they're going to be down. Or, you know, all of a sudden, they're going to lose Cassius Winston. They're going to be down. Here you are already. Is it 5-0, and 6-0? Oh, and oh? I mean, I think that's a big part of this thing is that your, your guys just get better over time, that the guys that aren't not supposed to be great. Like you look at Matt McQuaid's career, my goodness, right? All yeah. of a sudden he's, in the, he's playing in the Final Four. Yeah. Uh, those guys just got better. Don't you think that's important? Guys buy in. They unpack their bags. They're there four years, and you guys always win because of it. Well, you and I talked about it, you know, and as you get better players – you got that one problem. You ran into it a little bit too, where guys are leaving early yeah. and now all of a sudden you don't get that. I mean, we won the national championship. I think I had four red shirt guys, you know, Morris Peterson was a starter. My subs all red shirted, you know, does a great job of that is Wisconsin. Their guys are 110 oh, years yeah. old. You know, they were, they got double red shirts over there. I think it's illegal, but they do a great <laughs> job of that. We get just good enough players. And, and that's what you started to do where yeah. you can't red shirt them. And you might lose them. And so it makes it more difficult. And so right now, 
I've got maybe not as talented. There's not necessarily a pro pro, uh, but I think we've got a lot of guys together. And now my problem, I'm complaining to my staff that nobody's separating themselves. How am I going to play 11 guys? Yeah. And uh, that's I'm just hard. watching, and I've, I've watched two games. They're connected right now. I think this yeah. defensive team, it might be a really good defensive team, uh, but they're really connected. And uh, the, the, that the retention of players that you got guys that have been willing to wait yep. uh, to, and, and then having Hausner available. So that's a subject with me that, that is in me. How much better did Hauser get last year when he couldn't play for you? This is, you this is I'm railing that. This is what was his plan last year? Because you're seeing it right now. Yeah. Well, he got a lot stronger, especially with his legs. He had hips and ankle problems. He got a lot stronger. Um, he's a very good passer. I mean, we thought we were getting him out of high school, but he, he went to Marquette and that's great. But you know, his brother was there. We thought we were gonna get him. I don't even call him a transfer. Cause I said, you're yeah. just coming to your home again, yeah. but he did get better last year. And I think when you sit out and this is what I don't like about the NCAA, I think there's value in it. You know, there really is value. You not only, you learn stuff, but you learn some patience, especially yeah. for the really, really good players. And uh, I think they're making a mistake, but me and you will talk about that another yeah, time. I mean, that, that, and I, I'm going to talk a little bit about that this year, but I look at Charles Matthews. I look at Duncan Robinson. They didn't go to jail for a year. They right. weren't like punished for a year. They got, they, they guaranteed they were getting their degree. They ended up getting mentored like crazy. Another year in the weight room, another year of just working with coaches who work right year round for you. This is a good thing. Yeah, this is a good thing. And and, and either uh, for the for the good students, like I got Josh Langford now, he's going to get his master's. Yeah, for the is. average or poor students, they're going to at least get their degree. I mean, a free year of school. You know, I tell them, yeah, get out early, so now you can work for forty years instead of yeah. thirty nine. You know, what's the big deal? And yeah. and I think you and I have been on the same page on that the oh, whole yeah. time. I, I I think John, in the end of the day, with this. They act like that that the coaches are holding them back, or that I think the players are making so many mistakes. You know, if you want to transfer and sit out, you've really given it some thought. If you want to transfer and just you're just a mercenary, you know, you're just gonna be there. You don't you don't unpack your bags, as you that's said. Right. And uh and I think that that sit out year, I mean, I think it's gonna help Towser be a pro someday. And by the way, I'm glad you're not coaching anymore because I had to give you so much credit all year. Because I love Duncan Robinson in that. I mean, I just kept, they would interview me and I'd tell them all these good things. But if I was recruiting against you, I couldn't do that. So I kind of enjoyed you this way. Hey, hey, if it goes back to it, I think that when I was watching Matt McQuay, we were both recruiting him. And I said, we already got sort of Duncan Robinson here. And both of us benefited, you know, that, that yeah. you, I think we're just having those shooters out there you can count on made our teams better. So here, here's another thing about retention. This is something that you're very rare at, your staff. I mean, yeah. you have had, <laughs> you've only had one change in yeah. that entire time. And Tom, you deserve so much credit for this, but my question to you would be, is it you, is it them? Is it the administration? How does this group stay together? Because egos get in the way, yeah. you know, the people, you know, there's other opportunities out there. That's that, There's the magic in that right now. I, I think a little bit of all three, you know, I think there's a comfort level here and I tell them sometimes don't get too comfortable. I still push my staff, you know, I kind of came up in the Saban era, you know, I'm, I'm trying try not to be him, but I, I do think our job is to push our staffs too, you know, as you did and get guys jobs if that's what they want to do. The administration's been good. I think you changed that culture at your place when you started yeah. going to final fours that paying guys more, you know, and everything. And I think that's important. That really is because it's an arms race out there and recruiting for facilities, but it can be an arms race for assistant salaries. Now, the way they are, you look at football, geez, those coordinators are making more than, than anybody. Do you, do you that's really part of it. Like right now, like when you were out, I mean, how hard was that? Wasn't it like, but when you say, Hey, Dwayne's got that drill, you yeah. know, you don't this, worry about it. Gotta be a completely a, a very, I've I've had new staffs where I walked around the whole practice thinking I had to I called Jordan in and, and helped them with things and then as you get experienced staff you just know it's getting done you know it stuff's getting done 
You really do. And that includes off the court stuff. You know that I, I think that consistency and continuity is important in all programs. And, uh, you know, DJ took over and Dane's been here 10 years. He's been here eight, 16. And Mike Garland's been with me since college. You know, he's my bird dog guy. And, yeah. and then I brought in Doug Wojcik, who, you know, from your West oh Virginia God. days. And Doug's been a head coach. And and this year of all years when you can use that other guy, but he's really helped me in the recruiting and organization. So it is a good staff. Doug was with me in 05. So I've had all the guys kind of together. And as you know, sometimes that can be complacency. I guess that's one thing about me. I don't let them get very complacent and uh, it's been good, but I was out 14 days. I think that's why we won, man. The <laughs> players were happy. Everybody was happy. And, oh, and uh, I felt comfortable though. I mean, I, I watched a little on Zoom. Uh, you know, part of the COVID for me was the headaches. So it was hard for me to look at a computer all the time. Yeah. But I did feel comfortable. I, I think you said that very well. I really did. Yeah, I think that that was, there's been so many good changes. We all rail, you and I will talk about the, the changes within the NCAA. And it's really not the NCAA. It's the schools are, you know, the conferences are voting for this. It's not some right. guy, that, it's not Mark Emmerich somewhere saying, let's do this. It's what... The, 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 the universities all come together with. But that change, like Chris, like Chris Hunter's on the floor now at Michigan, he is such a good big man teacher, but there he is watching all the time. And now Doug Wojcik, you know, great coach, Tulsa, you know, uh, Navy guy, you know, yep. it's so good to have him out there. And me, for him too, I mean, but the, but who benefits? It's, it's the guys at the back end of your roster that are now getting more attention that maybe you couldn't use before. Everybody benefits. So well, I couldn't agree with you more. And you've been a fan of that. We all have because oh. you're a coach, you know, your son was a coach, you're a coach. And, and, and when you coach, you know, the two things is we're almost hindering people. And so then what do you do? You might hire an AU guy or something who's yeah. never coached because yeah. you can't bring guys up and, you know, we're fighting it. It seems like an uphill battle, but uh, I still think it's a very important part. If we can develop coaches, John Beeline can mentor them, Tom Izzo can mentor them, yeah. Mike Shisha, whoever it is, I, I think we got a lot to give to people too. And they don't get to learn that if we don't bring them in when they're young. You know, I was a GA. I mean, everybody was a GA. And uh, you were a head coach at such a young age. But just think what you learned, and that's a value that yeah. you can give to other people. And I think at the end of the day, what I try to tell the NCA or the schools, as you said, um, the kids would benefit. Yeah. You know, these kids need us, especially this day and age. They need us. Yeah, that's yeah, without question. But you, you, I just tell you, I'm going to really enjoy watching your teams again. I could, you know, I, I know you pretty well. I, I, I can see the stuff coming. I love how there's, there's change, but there's certain things that aren't going to change. And, and, and you, you, you adapt that team to your personnel. Usually at the beginning of the year, you'll try some stuff and you'll say, you know, that's cat, like, would you ever think cat? I've done you know, that. To have the ball that long is with Cassius. And with us in that last couple of years, you'd run them off three screens. By the end, it was like, guys, we can't guard this three times. Yeah. And, and so you've evolved. But this, this group right now, here's my prediction, is you're going to enjoy this group so much. You don't, you just lost two guys to the NBA. I mean, that that what one's a senior, one's a junior. But I, I think in a league with a year where the league's gonna be really tough again, right? You guys are gonna be just fine. It, it, you know, it, I, I think we are, John, because we're good defensively. Uh, I think we got a chance with Watts, Henry, and Josh Langford. You know, there's a kid you'd love because he's your kind of guy. He's a gym rat. Yeah. He works on it, he's a great student, he's gone through hell. And yeah, he's, yeah, he's overcome it. And I'm telling you, he's having his best practices. So I keep knocking on wood that he stays healthy. But if he does, we're a little bit, uh, you know, by committee at center. But if yeah. all the positions, you can live with committee at center compared to guard. And, uh, you know, I, I think the COVID, as dumb as this sounds, has helped us a little bit. We've done a pretty neat job here. We we took our recruiting room upstairs and made it into an arcade room. We just tried to do some things to bring them around more instead of yeah. laying in those apartments, pushing their computer button to do Zoom. We made a little study area here and it's brought us closer. I've got no, what you call super, super stars. Yeah. And so everybody kind of gets along. I, I, it has been a little hard because I'm trying to play 11. 
you know that's going to go down to nine. I know and, that's going down. I know yeah, that. Yeah, and, and yeah, you fall in love with your own kids and somebody, you know, and I don't blame them because the 10th and 11th man are saying, well, I'm just as good. And I'm saying you are. And you've got that problem. Yeah, but I think the Izzo kid should be playing more. That's where I'm having a problem personally <laughs> watching the game. And I want him in the game and I'm not seeing it. You do want him in the game if you're at Michigan. You don't want him in the game. But, but you know, my wife's giving me a lot of hassles. Oh, yeah. Them, you, yeah. Know, you know how that goes. You've been there. But you know what, John? I, I, I want to say this because I know we're getting near the end. You know, I, I think of when you came to Michigan and seriously, you know, we always laugh because I said, you got to hate your rival. But I always respect it. And, and, you know, with you, I couldn't even hate my rival anymore. <laughs> you, you, you made me better. Because you, you know, you came in here and beat us a few times and we did there. And if you look at it, it was a pretty even run uh, once we got going. And you know what? You said it. And I think, you know, Juwan will do a good job and everything. But if you would have stayed a few more years, we would have caught that Duke and, and, and North well, Carolina that's, rivalry. That's, that's my, as, as I look at this schedule, I'm going to be on the media saying, Michigan, Michigan State's got to be the last game of the year every year at different places, like it was in probably when we played for the championship at year over year. Yep, yep. Last year I saw it wasn't. And it's like this has got to be in the same. Who, what two teams have had this type of success in postseason in the last 10 years? Michigan, Michigan State, I can argue with anybody, including Duke, Duke and North Carolina, teams in the Final Four. I think there's five of them in the last 10 years. You know, you said it. You said it during one of the press conferences, and uh, you said, you know, we're Duke, we, we can be, we're as good as the Duke and Carolina rivalry. And, and I sat in my office, I said, that man's crazy. And then I looked, and I looked at what you looked at and what we both accomplished. I said, he's damn right, you know? And, and, and it was special. You helped make it special, but I think the best part, there was great respect because you know we we're yeah. both doing it the right way. We yeah. did it maybe different ways, but it was the right way in a sport that's done the wrong way a lot. <laughs> and uh, so for that, I will always okay. respect, admire. And if you care at all, tell your wife to send you up here, teach me that turnover thing, which is I could be really good <laughs> if I quit turning the ball over. Oh, man. Well, hey, listen, this is great. I'm going to look forward to doing this with a lot of coaches, but this is special, man, to, to be able to talk with you. And uh, I, I, I know that one day you will retire. Yes. And I'm just telling you, there's nothing like the win, especially on the road. But game day for me was always really tough. Up at, The game starts, I'm fine. Yeah. But I don't, that's the only thing I don't, I don't miss. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, miss the I, game, but I don't miss game day. And, yeah, uh, I, I agree with you. And I'll, I'm sure I'll be talking to you about that. But I'm really happy you're doing this because I think you'll bring a lot, uh, not only in knowledge, but just the perspective. I think a lot of people lose out. You know, when I listen to the talking heads on, on pro sports and that, you know, I love when there's a coach or a player on there that's been through it, you know, and you'll bring great, uh, you know, just great emotion, but you'll bring great knowledge. And I'm excited that you're there. You know, I'm, I'm happy for you. And anything you want from us, it's always there. Uh, I it'll, promise you. It'll be fun. I, I hope I hope I can come up to one of those practices. I'd like to see it. When, I want to go up there when you got the shoulder pads on. That's it's illegal I'm now. Doing. If I do it now, a lawyer's coming and suing me, so I can't do it anymore. <laughs> but but everything else is good. I'd love to have you anytime you want. All right. Good luck against Northwestern and all these road games, and go do what you do on the road. Thanks, John. Appreciate right. you. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.